James and the Top Hat from the Railway Series, Book 3, James the Red Engine, published 1948, Great Britain, written by the Reverend W. Audrey. James was a new engine who lived at a station at the other end of the line. He had two small wheels in front and six driving wheels behind. They weren't as big as Gordon's, and they weren't as small as Thomas's. The fat controller, who used to be called the fat director, told him, You're a special mixed traffic engine. You'll be able to pull coaches or trucks quite easily. But trucks are not easy things to manage, and on his first day they had pushed him down a hill and into a field. He had been ill after the accident, but now he had new brakes and a shining coat of red paint. The red paint will cheer you up after your accident, said the fat controller. You are to pull coaches today, and Edward shall help you. They went together to find the coaches. Be careful with the coaches, James, said Edward. They don't like being bumped. Trucks are silly and noisy. They need to be bumped and taught to behave. But coaches get cross and will pay you out. They took the coaches to the platform and were both coupled on in front. The fat controller, the station master and some little boys came to admire James's shining rods and red paint. James was pleased. I'm a really splendid engine, he thought to himself, and suddenly let off steam. Whoosh! The fat controller, the station master and the guard all jumped and a shower of water fell on the fat controller's nice new top hat. Just then the whistle blew and James thought they had better go. So they did. Go on, go on, he puffed to Edward. Don't push, don't push, puffed Edward, for he did not like starting quickly. Don't go so fast, don't go so fast, grumbled the coaches, but James did not listen. He wanted to run away before the fat controller could call him back. He didn't even want to stop at the first station. Edward tried hard to stop, but the two coaches in front were beyond the platform before they stopped, and they had to go back to let the passengers get out. Lots of people came to look at James, and as no one seemed to know about the fat controller's top hat, James felt a bit happier. Presently, they came to the junction, where Thomas was waiting with his two coaches. Hello, James, said Thomas kindly. Feeling better? That's right. Ah, that's my guard's whistle. I must go. Sorry, I can't stop. I don't know what the fat controller would do without me to run this branch line. And he puffed off, importantly, with his two coaches into a tunnel. Leaving the junction, they passed the field where James had had his accident. The fence was mended and the cows were back again. James whistled, but they paid no attention. They clattered through Edward's station yard and started to climb the hill beyond. It's ever so steep, it's ever so steep, puffed James. I've done it before, I've done it before, puffed Edward. It's steep, but we'll do it, it's steep, but we'll do it. The two engines puffed along as they pulled the train up the long hill. They both rested at the next station. Edward told James how Gordon had stuck on the hill and how he had had to push him up. James laughed so much that he got hiccups and surprised an old lady in a black bonnet. She dropped all of her parcels and three porters, the station master and the guard, had to run after her picking them up again. James was quiet in the shed that night. He had enjoyed his day, but he was a little afraid of what the fat controller would say about the top hat.